service of CNC Worldwide. Daily is a service of CNC and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. Your full AccuWeather forecast is always on top here at your CNC local page. The NY Works Initiative, included in the new state budget, will invest $8 million on repairs and improvements to three state parks in Rochester and the Finger Lakes region. Hamlin Beach, Letchworth, and Seneca State Parks will benefit. The initiative is funding infrastructure improvements around the state in an effort to drive construction jobs. As reported here earlier this week, NY Works is investing $16.5 million into major road and bridge projects around the Rochester region as well. Governor Cuomo's office says the top project is a $2.4 million overhaul of the deteriorating electrical system at the Hamlin Beach State Park campgrounds. It's 45 years old, it's failing, causing a health and safety issue for campers and park employees. Letchworth State Park in Livingston County comes in for some major work, replacement of the comfort station and shower building for campers there, which has been falling apart. The road to Council Grounds campsite, which was closed by a landslide, will be cleared and rebuilt. And $3.4 million will go into upgrading the park's water system and connecting it with the Cass Style Municipal Water Supply. Over in Geneva, they'll replace the rundown public boat launch at Seneca Lake State Park. Heavy hitters, including New York Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver, toured the Eastman Business Park in Rochester on Wednesday. A top Rochester area economic development official says the complex we used to call Kodak Park is about to start booming again. Mark Peterson is president and CEO of the Greater Rochester Enterprise, a regional group that works to develop and bring new businesses into the community. He says the massive site that stretches from Lake Avenue in Rochester all the way out to Ridgeway Avenue in Greece is an ideal place for that sort of development. We've successfully recruited companies with uh, headquarters in the United Kingdom, in uh, California, um, from Canada. And there are a number of companies operating in Eastern Business Park that came here because of the unique assets of the park and the quality of the workforce that we have here. Um, it's the people. Um, so it's not just the hard assets, it's also the people and the intellectual capabilities that we have and that uh, the legacy of a Kodak brings to this community that helps us bring new companies to the region. Peterson says the main thing holding back growth of new small and medium-sized businesses at Eastman Business Park is the difficulty of raising capital to launch them. Three high-tech companies are among the latest to move their operations into the park. OmniID, Quintel, and Intrinsic, all high-tech manufacturers. Hiring could grow to 250 new jobs. You can catch the full interview with Mark Peterson in the window just below the one you're listening to right now. Two developments in a story that will be with us for months to come yet, the Kodak bankruptcy. Eastman Kodak Company put plans to cut back retiree health benefits on temporary hold through a court filing on Wednesday, but it also filed to give some of its current employees pay raises. Kodak filed papers with the United States Bankruptcy Court in New York City, agreeing that a committee should be set up to represent the interests of Kodak retirees during the company's bankruptcy process. Earlier, Kodak sought the court's permission to drop health care coverage for about 17,000 retirees and their families who are also eligible for Medicare. Two different groups of Kodak retirees filed to block the cuts, which Kodak says will save millions and help it emerge from bankruptcy. And also on Wednesday, Kodak filed papers with Judge Alan Gropper to authorize what the company calls an employee continuity plan. In this filing, Kodak says it's been bleeding critical employees ever since the rumors began to circulate about the company's financial situation. Kodak says it's only gotten worse since the bankruptcy filing in January. So Kodak wants Judge Gropper to authorize spending up to $13.5 million to retain mostly middle to upper level managers it believes are critical to its business and restructuring. Those employees would be offered bonuses according to a formula based partly on skills and leadership, partly on how hard it would be to replace them. About 120 mid-level managers have been identified as critical so far and they could expect incentives of from 25 to 35 percent on top of their base pay if they stay around. Kodak says their names are highly confidential and did not include any details in its court filing. 
After long debate Wednesday night, the Rochester City Planning Commission decided not to grant historic landmark status to the century-old brew house at 13 Cataract Street. That vote clears the way for North American breweries to move forward with a $2.6 million brew pub and museum next to the Genesee Brewery. It simultaneously disappointed historic preservation advocates who wanted to see the building renovated and put back to use. The dispute threatened to kill the project at the Upper Falls. North American said it would move the funding to another of its cities if it couldn't tear down the abandoned building. North American did try to sell the badly deteriorated building but didn't find any buyers and nobody could seem to come up with the money to restore it. After several hours of public pro and con, the Preservation Board voted to grant the landmark status, but then, just a few minutes later, the Planning Board voted to overrule that decision and advance the brewery project. North American still needs the construction permits, but says it's ready to go ahead. It hopes to have the microbrewery and retail project up and running in August. To the left of this window are links to more information on these and other stories. Next news as it happens here on CNC with updates when necessary. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.